Hello and welcome to the eForms Basics webinar. In this webinar, we will cover the basic setup and layout of fields in an eForm. We have several internal eForms for you to modify and use, but for this webinar, we are going to start with a blank eForm to make sure that we can be familiar with how to set everything up. To start, we're going to go ahead and click on Add and Blank. So now we see our new form here, it just says Form. We'll double click into that. And we're going to click on Edit Properties up here. And the description is just the name. We're going to change that a little bit. Change it to Test Form. And we're going to keep everything else on this page the same except for Max Width. We're going to go ahead and change that to 600. Just means that it's going to be wider for the tablets. We'll go ahead and hit Save. Next, we're going to select Text Box. The text box is going to be what you'll use for questions that require the patient to type in an answer. Now, right now, the only thing we're going to do is we're going to add a label. Go ahead and put first name and we'll hit save. So now we see the label of first name and the place where the patients are going to be typing. But we want the first name to be able to import into the patient's chart. So we're going to double click in and we're going to select database link. Now, the database links are just the list of all the things that can potentially be linked into the patient's chart. So in this case, we're going to select the first name, F name. So now the first name will import into the patient's first name portion of their chart. We'll go ahead and hit save. And next we're going to select label and we're going to add a label. The label is just text that's going to be on the e-form for the patients to read. For this one, we're going to put, thank you for visiting our office. And we're going to hit save. Now this is something that we want at the end of the e-form and not at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and just click on it and we're going to drag it. Now anywhere you can release and leave this is going to leave a peach highlight. So we're going to put it right here below the first name. And you see that it's now moved. Now let's go ahead and add a date field. Now the date field is going to give the patient a prompt to enter a date using a calendar. This field can be used for both random questions like when was your last dental exam, as well as the patient's date of birth that can import into their chart. We'll go ahead and make a date of birth option right here. So we're going to put in date of birth. And since we are going to want that to import into the patient's birth date section, we're going to select birth date and hit save. Now we're going to look at the checkboxes. Checkboxes are used for single selections. But like text boxes, you can use them for questions that import, like problems or allergies, or for questions that do not, like I agree. So let's go ahead and create a checkbox. And we're going to create one of those I agree questions. So we're just going to click in the label, I agree, and hit save. And we're going to drag this below date of birth. Now we need something to agree to. Let's go ahead and add another label. And here I've already got something typed up. I'm just going to paste in and hit save. And now we have a whole agreement section for a patient to read and then check agree. Now, if you want to have multiple check boxes like a yes or a no, you're going to want to use a radio button. Radio buttons work the same as a checkbox, but now you need to have both a label for your question and the text for each response. So for example, yes and no. Let's go ahead and add a radio button. For this label, we're gonna put consent. And then we're gonna come over here to pick list and hit add row. That's gonna give us our first selection for the patient to select. We're going to type I consent to the treatment above. And we're going to now add a second one by clicking add row. I refuse the treatment above and hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and drag this consent down here below the I agree. And we've got both options for the patient to select. Now we almost have a complete consent form. Let's go ahead and finish it by adding a signature at the end. So we'll come over to your signature box, select that. We don't need to do anything special, just hit save. And then let's make sure we put the signature where we want it. So let's put it right there. That way the thank you can still be the last thing on the page. Now, once we take a look at this form, we see that we need a last name as well. So we're gonna go ahead and add another text box. For this label, put last name. 
And for the database link, we're going to select L name for last name. And we're going to hit save. Now we see we can drag it up underneath first name and we've got first name, last name, birth date. But to make it look better on tablets and phones, we're going to go ahead and put the fields next to each other. To do that, we're going to double click into last name and we're going to select horizontal stacking it means we're going to put the field next to another field. And since we're going to be putting it next to another field, we need to specify how wide we want the fields to be. So we are going to come up here to width and we're actually going to choose width is percentage. So that means we can tell it how much of that row to take up. So we're going to tell it to take up 50% and hit save. And we see it automatically goes next to the first name. We haven't done anything to first name, so we still need to modify that. Come up here and same thing. Try and give that 50% as well. And now we've got a 50-50 split for the first name and last name. And no matter if it's a tablet or a phone, we see that's going to continue to be a 50-50 split for either one. Now for the rest of these fields, we're only going to cover the medication list and page break in this video. But for this, we're going to go ahead and hit save on this form. And we're going to go into our medical history long. We're going to jump ahead a few pages here. And we see we've got a question. Is the patient taking any medications or supplements? The next thing we want to do is we actually want to have a place for the patients to put in their medications. So we're going to go ahead and select medication list. Now I know there's a lot on this page. But right now, the only things that we're going to do is we're going to double check the title. Title looks good. And then we're going to go ahead and uncheck is call to visible. That means we're going to be hiding a second column. But for now, we're just going to uncheck that and click save. Now we have a medication area for patients to type in their medications and remove them as necessary. Now, the last thing we want to cover is page breaks. So if you want to have information go on to another page, you're going to need to add a page break. So as soon as I add this page break, anything that's below that page break will automatically be shifted to the next page. So we'll click page break, see that the medications were, but we'll go ahead and go over to the page four. We'll find it. We can actually drag it right back, put it where we want it. And now everything's good here. And we have a blank fourth page to add new information. And now we've covered the basics of how to create a new form. For more in-depth details, make sure to check for other eForm webinars. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team at 503-363-5432 or click the question mark in any Open Dental window to access our help feature. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our latest training videos. See you next time.